Yeah, hi winners. Uh, this is Dr. Srikanth from Team MDS Conquer. So now we'll be discussing few important concepts of endo. So let's start endo quick revision without wasting any time. Okay, the first important aspect is the length of the working area of instruments in endo. So normally the length of the working areas in instruments in endo is going to be 16 millimeters means whatever may be the length of the file for example you have files of 21 millimeters you have files of uh, 24 millimeters you have files of 28 millimeters whatever may be the length of the file the working area will be only 16 millimeters means uh, the area which comes in contact with the instrumentation everything will be 16 millimeters for files reamers and most of the instruments in endo and you need to make a note about the DG16 Explorer, that is Endodontic Explorer, where DG is nothing but called as David Green. 16 is nothing but the working area is again 16 millimeters here. Okay, thing next one is Active GP. Active GP is nothing but GIC coated GP. Okay, so Active GP is nothing but a GIC coated GP. And uh, one more important thing anything which activates the Gatapacha, which makes it more useful, is also called as Active GP. But better to go with GIC coated, even calcium hydroxide coated GP is also called as active GP, even chloride coated GP is also called as active GP. So we'll just make a note about the calcium hydroxide, pH of calcium hydroxide ranges from 10 to 11. And calcium hydroxide was introduced into endo by Herman. Whereas the percentage of chloride used in endo is 2 percentage. Whereas the amount of chloride used in perio, that is amount of chloride used in the mouthwashes is 0.12 percentage if you don't find 0.12 percentage then the better option is going to be 0.2 percentage endo 2 percentage perio 0.12 or 0.2 percentage jumping into the next part i'm talking about the nerves in dental pulp okay so if you talk about the nerves in dental pulp dental pulp has a a delta c fibers and a beta a beta are less in number but a beta are also present okay right so it is A delta. A delta are present in the periphery. C fibers are present in the core. C fibers are present in the center. C fibers are unmyelinated fibers. Whereas A delta and beta fibers are myelinated fibers. Whenever you give LA, the first fibers which, which get anesthetized by LA is unmyelinated fibers. Those are C fibers. So next we are talking about the uh, pulpal pressure. So when I am talking about the pulpal pressure, so normal pulpal pressure is 5 to 10 milligrams millimeters of hg or you can consider it as 10 to 15 centimeters of water if you are comparing with water it is 10 to 15 centimeters if you are comparing with hg it is 10, 5 to 10 millimeters of hg which is almost equal to the portal pressure the portal pressure is also the same that is 5 to 10 millimeters of hg or 10 to 15 centimeters of saline or water okay next important thing that you have to make a note is irreversible pulpitis irreversible reversible pulpitis okay so reversible pulpitis, it is 13.5 millimeters of Hg. Irreversible pulpitis, it is 34.5 millimeters of Hg. Next one is root end resection. Okay, when, when you are preparing the, the root end, in the case of your microsurgery, okay, or in the case of endodontic surgery, so traditional endodontics, it is 45 degrees angle, whereas in the modern endodontics, it is 0 to 10 degrees angle. The basic reason for modifying 45 degrees to 10 degrees is lesser exposure lesser exposure of the dentinal tubules in 45 degrees angle you will have more exposure of dentinal tubules more chances of reinfection whereas in 0 to 10 degrees lesser exposure of the dentinal tubules number of dentinal tubules are exposed is less less in number of dentinal tubules exposed so that's going to be an advantage that is the reason why it was dropped down to 0 to 10 degrees in modern endodontics when compared with the traditional endodontics but do make a note about riddle solution Riddle solution, uh, first of all, the main advantage of riddle solution, it helps in identifying the missed canals, it helps in identifying the accessory canals and everything because, and that too on a radiograph, because basically this solution has a radio-opaque material. Okay, so this radio-opaque material helps in identifying the extra things which are being missed with the help of uh, multiple radiographs. Basically, the solution consists of 7% of EDTA, 5% of NEOs here, and a radio opaque material. Next one is tip angle in endo. Tip angle in endo is 75 degrees plus or minus 15 degrees. Next one is glass bead sterilizer. 
So glass bead sterilization is a, is a type of it's a type of dry heat. Okay, so it's a type of dry heat. Your paper points and most of the things will be sterilized by glass bead sterilizer. Do make a note of the temperature of glass bead. That is 425 to 475 degrees Fahrenheit and 218 to 248 degrees centigrade. See whether they are giving a temperature based question on Fahrenheit or centigrade. And most of the situations they are going to give centigrade for an Indian exams. For example, if you are preparing for INBD or any other exams, it will be probable in the Fahrenheit. But before attempting the question related to the temperatures, make sure you just see which units are being given. So the regular temperature of contact, contact temperature we maintain is 15 seconds, 5 seconds. 5 seconds is the regular one. That is most commonly used for files and dreamers. 10 seconds is used for power points and 15 seconds is used for bursts. And do make a note in the sterilization aspect, particularly autoclave, contact period is very, very important. Autoclave regularly 121 degrees centigrade, 15 LBS and 15 minutes. Okay, contact period is 15 minutes or whenever the temperature is being increased. Particularly in the case of autoclave, you have something called as flash sterilization of autoclave, where you are going to increase the temperature, that is 134 degrees centigrade. The temp contact period now will be 3 minutes and the pressure will be more, that is 30 LBS. Okay, That is 134, 3 minutes and 30 LBS. Whereas the normal autoclave temperature is 121 degrees centigrade, 15 LBS, and 15 minutes and do make a note of these two temperatures which are very very important right so next one is of course we have discussed this so many times that is the classification of instrument damage so when you are repeatedly doing the biomechanical preparation with the same instrument so upon microscopic examination you can clearly find the instrument damage which is being classed into six classes so whenever there is a bend in the instrument that is class one Class 2 is straightening of the twisted fluids. Normally fluids will be twisted. So whenever the twisted fluids are being straight, that is class 2. Peeling of the metal at the blade edges is class 3. Clockwise twist is called as class 4. And uh, clocking of the instrument along its long axis is called as class 5. And full fracture of the instrument, complete fracture of the instrument is called as class 6. And do make a note, this is something new. But you can go back and check your PP books. Okay. <coughs> and uh, diagram based question is also very common. If you don't have PP books, you can use Google and check this particular classification. A question can be predicted from this area. Of course, point number 11 was already given in the recent NEET examination, that is SAMFES test or a bubble test. Basically, the solution is used is NAOS here and the purpose of this test is identification of a mist canal. Whenever the bubbles are going to come, you assume or predict that there is a vital pulp which is not being removed and, and you are going to find a mist canal. Okay. Uh, what are the, what are the uh, intracanal medicament of choice in the case of your weeping canals? Weeping canals are nothing but canals where there is a constant discharge of the pus. Those are called as weeping canals. In such cases, you have to keep <coughs> calcium hydroxide as a dressing material. Next, we need to talk about McKean solution. So McKean solution basically consisting of 5 parts of 36% of NaCl and 5 parts of 30% of H2O2. 30 percent is of H2, 30 to 35 percent is of H2O2 is called as soproxel. We are very familiar. Okay, soproxel is basically 30 to 35 percent is of H2O2 by weight or 100 percent is of oxygen by volume. Means 30 to 35 percent is of H2O2 by weight is going to release 100 percent is of oxygen by volume, and it contains one part of 0.2 percent is of ether, which is basically used to remove the debris. Whereas after a few days, the McKee solution is being modified in which 36% of HCl is being replaced by is being replaced by 20% of NaOH. And there is one more important thing that you have to make a note about is microaberration. Microaberration regularly we use 18% of HCl. Okay. That is being modified to 11%. Okay. That is being modified to 11% of HCl by crawl. Okay, crawl has been modified it from 18% as initial to the 11% because 11% was again a question that is given in 2018. Do make a note, 18% option is also there. As it is being modified and it is being advanced, the percentage is being decreased from 18 to 11. So it's better to go with 11% as an answer rather than 18%. Next one is wavelength of pulse oximetry. So we are very familiar that pulse oximetry is very familiarly used in the COVID-19. Apart from this, pulse oximetry is one of the 
vitality procedure which is very very familiar okay the next vitality procedure uh, which is very very important is laser doppler flow meter so pulse oximetry helps in determining the oxygen saturation levels of the pulp right so pulse oximetry has a wavelength you have to make a note that is 660 nanometers and 940 nanometers two wavelengths you have to remember next is Wien's root canal modification is a very familiar question that is frequently asked in the exams type 1 is 1 1 type 2 is 2 1 type 3 is 2 2 type 4 is 1 2 do make a note this is very important and later it's being modified by vertices which has divided into 8 that is 1 1 2 1 1 2 1 2 2 1 2 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 and 3 and 3 3 and 3 is 8 you need to make a note about the fish jones that you can remember with i c i s okay that is nothing but i c i s i for infection c for contamination i for irritation s for stimulation and i hope you remember all these diagrams which i have discussed vigorously when we are taking the regular classes and the predominant cells in the case of infection zone are polymorph nucleosides and it's center zone and contamination you have more lymphocytes or you can they can ask you round cells are more predominant in contamination zone irritation zone you have clasts macrophages okay and it is clinically more significant okay and cholesterol crystals are also seen this is clinically more significant zone is irritation zone of course sti stimulation zone you have blast cells means make a note <laughs> the healing always takes from periphery to the center whereas the infection spreads from center to the periphery center means infection zone it's moves to the periphery stimulation zone whereas healing whenever the root canal therapy is done the healing starts from the periphery zone that is the stimulation and it moves to the center and next one 19 19th point i'll be talking about forms of gattapacha so gattapacha normally available in the department will be beta form whenever this beta form is being heated it will be converted into alpha form whenever it is overheated uncontrolled heating it is going to convert into gamma form gamma form is the most unstable form most useless form whereas beta form is most commonly used in the lateral condensation technique alpha form is most commonly used in the techniques where the heat is used thermomechanical vertical compaction all these techniques we use alpha form basically beta form is going to convert into alpha form in and around temperature like 56 to 64 degrees centigrade okay right and i hope uh, most of these points were already covered in your classes in the pp books if time permits please go back and have a glance if you are not clear with this and 20th question is a very familiar question see, repeated so many times in neat and inict two canal configuration the mandibular incisors is seen around in around 41.4 percentage of cases mb2 is again a familiar question mb2 percentage in the case of maxillary first molar in the microscope not to the naked eye in the microscope is around 95 percentage of cases so i don't want to discuss much about the elise classification elise classification type 1 type 2 type 3 are very familiar anamel anamel dentin anamel dentin and pulp type 4 is non-vital type 5 is evolution <laughs> evolution sorry type 6 is a uh, fracture of the root fracture type 7 is the displacement of the teeth type 8 is crown and fracture and type 9 is any sort of damage related to the primary teeth working length method of determining the case of open apex cases or blender bus canals is by using the paper points and do make a note already discussed paper points as sterilized by what method yes it is dry heat sterilization method that's nothing but called as paper points and uh, root canal irrigation solution showing allergic reactions is potassium iodide as well as chloroxid both options are there better to go with potassium iodide as a best option 25 pi index periapical index which is uh, taken on the radiograph so the uh, grade one is a normal periapical area grade two is a smaller changes grade three is changes with mineral loss grade four is periodontitis with radiolucent areas grade five is severe periodontitis with radiolucent areas so 